Hey, it's Mike with Tech VB. And I'm going to cover kind of a weird topic today. And it's, it's something that everybody seems to be obsessed about and stuff like that. And it's, it's about kick, okay? And, and my gun has kick, and that gun doesn't have kick, and this gun has more kick than that gun does. And so I'm going to try to talk a little bit today about what is kick and, and you know, just, just you know, try, try to basically just try to sum up what kick is and, and so, so that when you have a gun that you can control it, okay? Kick actually comes back to, uh, uh, you know, firearm shooting, you know, target shooting with, uh, with, with real guns, okay? Like this one, this is, you know, this is a Glock 19, okay? This gun, when you shoot it at the range, has kick. I mean, you feel it, choom, 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 every time you kick it. You get a little bit of barrel rise, you know, you're shooting a, uh, you know, you're shooting a bullet at 1100, 1200, 1300 feet per second. Every time you shoot it, you know, you're going to have a noticeable recoil. It's simple physics. Um, you know, here's another, it's a 38 Special, okay? Um, easy gun to shoot when you're at the, at, the, at the target range, but this gun has kick also. You know, you're sitting there shooting, too, especially when you're putting the, uh, the self-defense rounds in here. This gun does have a little bit of recoil to it. Um, paintball guns, when you compare them to real firearms, don't have kick at all, in my opinion. Okay, most paintball guns don't have any, in my opinion. Okay, shooting a paintball gun for me is like clicking a remote control. Okay, for me, they don't feel like they have kick. I've shot, t you know, tons and tons of firearms on tons and tons of firearms. Firearms have kick. Paintball guns really don't. Okay, this little, this little noticeable, every time you shoot, okay, if that bothers you, go play laser tag. Okay, Th that's just... You're dealing with basic physics, okay? It takes a little bit of recoil to shoot a paintball gun, you know, from zero to 300 feet per second, which is about 200 miles an hour, in the course of about three or four inches, okay? Now, the reason why I have my matrix out here is because there's basic physics here, okay? It's, it, the more weight that you have behind the barrel, the less kick that your gun's gonna actually have, okay? Now, there's certain things that if you're really looking to try to get the amount of kick on your gun down, there's certain things that you can do. The heavier you make your gun, the less kick it's going to have, okay? If you go from a velocity to a halo loader, your gun's going to feel like it has a little bit less kick. If you go from a 45 cubic inch tank to a 68 cubic inch tank, you're going to notice your gun's uh, not going to be, you know, it's not going to uh, have as much kick and recoil. Now, there's something else that is totally different. Kick you can't avoid, okay? Every gun's going to have a little bit of kick, but there is something that, um, that, that sometimes people get confused is there's a difference between kick, you know, which, and, and there's also a difference between kick and vibration, okay? A lot of guns, especially spring-driven guns, have a lot of vibration, and many times that's what you actually feel through the grip when you're shooting your gun. Titmans, spiders, um, I'm trying to think of any other, you know, any other spring-driven guns. You feel a lot of vibration in those, and, and, and they're heavy enough where you don't really get a lot of kick, but you still feel that noticeable, that little vibration in it. So maybe by kind of talking about this, this may kind of help you a little bit when you're setting up your gun, you know, for, for you know, especially you guys that, you know, think your first shot, first kill, you know, if you want a gun that's, you know, has very little recoil, very little um, kick to it, you know, look at one, trying to make your gun as heavy as possible by putting a halo instead of a velocity, uh, 68 instead of a 45. That's going to help. Also, some of the super light guns that are coming out right now, like the Dangerous Power G3, um, super lightweight gun, uh, some of the new Egos that have come out, even like the Vice and the Protege. Okay, the lighter the gun is, the more barrel rise you're going to get every single time you shoot. Um, you know, but I know, in, in my opinion, the only gun that's ever been made where I can honest to God say that that gun has literally almost no... Um, you know, barrel rise or kick or recoil or even vibration is this fucker right here. Okay, this is the pot belly pig of paintball, man. This is <laughs> the Matrix. I don't think that there's a heavier electronic gun that's out there. I think this is even heavier than the old Shocker 4x4. I mean, this gun has got some motherfucker weight to it. Um, I brought the scale out here, so just to end this show, I'm going to uh, weigh this gun. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> oh my God. Check this out. Three pounds, 7.2 ounces with a critical ASA and a, uh, and a barrel. Let me make sure that you can see that. I mean, that is a heavy gun. And which is why these guns are great for, uh, for especially playing woods ball. Um, you've got it posted up on somebody and it's a really, really far shot. I mean, you pull the trigger once, the gun doesn't move, you pull the trigger again, you're going to get the same shot in the same place. 
Um, but hopefully that kind of clears up what exactly kick is and recoil and vibration. Sometimes some of what you're actually feeling in the gun is vibration. Sometimes if it's a super lightweight gun, you will notice a little bit of kick. But uh, you know, hopefully this uh, hopefully this kind of helps clear that up. So when you're making your gun choice, you can kind of discern between kick and and uh, vibration, and, and maybe it'll help you make a better gun choice. Thanks for tuning in.